Hello everybody, my name is Diego Mendoza with Team 21 and today we are proud to present the Augmented Reality Enhancement for the SRP PMM Test Bench. I will be presenting the project description, marketability, problem statement, and objectives. Here we go with the project description. Our project entails enhancing an existing SRP PMM, that soccer rod pump, pump, permanent magnet motor, test bench, at our industrial sponsors, BCP Group's Houston facility. We're enhancing this test bench with augmented reality to better display the test bench's data to the user, be it a technician or a client. This is what the test bench looks like currently. ThingWorks is a software that allows us to take the test bench's existing data to Vaforia Studio which is where we can design our augmented reality experience. This experience will be experienced by the user through the Microsoft Industrial HoloLens. In the end, we expect the test bench to be enhanced the same way this air compressor system is enhanced. Marketability, revolutionizing motor testing. That is our goal. We seek to transcend the current limitations of demonstrations and analysis by creating an augmented reality experience for the user, which, which makes it so intuitive to understand the benefits of the permanent magnet motor for SRP by comparing it to existing solutions in the field, as well as creating a visual and captivating experience for the user so they can conceptualize the reality that the SRP PMM is the best solution in the market. Problem statement and objectives. The problem we are faced with is that our existing test bench requires the user to see the data feed from a remote uh, data center within our facility. And the test bench itself is shown through a video feed. We seek to keep everything right there in the heat of the moment that's where we want to augment the existing test bench with artificial reality. To do this, we need to have efficient data capture and management. We're gonna use ThingWorks to take the data from the industrial PLC, then transfer that to the Vaporia Studio to create the artificial reality experience. This will give us great visualization and comparison to rival technology. That way, the client will be able to intuitively understand the benefits that this solution provides. Technicians who are using this without clients present will be able to have a more hands-on experience. The intended users are technicians, quality control teams, workshop supervisors, training personnel, clients and potential buyers. All of these people are going to be physically present in front of the permanent magnet motor test bench. So they'll all be able to grab a single hollow lens and use it when they need to. The intended uses all stem from the first one, which is real-time motor data visualization. Various ways we can apply that, comparative analyses, training and demonstrations. Um, it's more intuitive when you're training to see the data really represented before you rather than just trying to see if that motor's really spinning faster or, you know, see if it's using less energy. It can't be done. Um, error detection and troubleshooting. Product sales demonstrations. This is going to make for a much more vivid display of the energy that's being saved by the motor than numbers on a chart would do. Now this is new technology. This stuff's not being used very widely. Uh, it's not very broadcast when it's being used. So what we were able to find was largely proof of concept examples from researchers uh, rather than current industry, current daily use industry types of applications. So the first example was a Brazilian team that created a uh, 4.0 advanced manufacturing line. What they did was they monitored the power consumption of every component in the line and displayed it in an AR format using a smartphone. And this is what their display looked like. Uh, you got the power consumption listed in numbers. Um, this is looking through a phone. You can see the component, see how much power it's using. Now what we're going to do better is we are going to make this power consumption more intuitive. Uh, it's not just going to be numbers, it'll be graphical. This group um, had an aluminum melting furnace. Uh, they were representing airflow data and burner on off status. Obviously you can't see air flowing in pipes. So what they did was they used a hollow lens and they 
added these red and blue arrows to those pipes to represent where hot and cold air are flowing at any given time, mostly for training purposes. Another use that we found was um, somebody developed a program to attempt to teach industrial automation. We found that their, their display was very cluttered. Uh, it was hard to see the components behind the AR pieces put in front of you. Now, and the other important thing to remember with all of these other previous applications is that each of these needs to be built from the ground up. I will be using Vuforia, it'll make it fast, uh, it's very cutting edge stuff, but it, it does need to be built from the ground up for each location, for each application, and that's what we'll be doing with the test bench. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Torres, I am part of Team 21, and today I'll be talking about intellectual property, the, that section of the proposal. Uh, the first one is why cover intellectual property, right? That's the first question we want to tackle. And the main topic really is, uh, the main purpose is to avoid infringement and to make sure we are not, uh, we're not attempting against the copyrights of other patents. Uh, for a proposal, we will be examining exactly three patents. The title are as following. Augmented Reality Data Center, Visualization. The second one, method and system for generating augmented reality with display of motor vehicle. And then finally, user control and augmented reality. There are three key concepts we will be looking into for each individual patent. The first one being the summary, a main overview of the patent. Claim summary, a potential key concept that can uh, conflict with our own patent. And non-infringement, where we basically justify why it doesn't infringe with our patent. For the first one, Augmented Reality Data Center Visualization, it basically does that, where they apply AR technology to look at the components of a server, meaning in the healthcare or a hospital, and they can see the metrics of the, com of the components, also the, the power consumption and those sort of, of measurements. Uh, basically, the, the visualization of the, of the metrics is one that is potentially uh, against our own project, but we'll dive into that later. The algorithms used, similar to our PMM uh, application, we have the user-friendly interfa interface, which is something that we will potentially have, and we'll show a little bit of that later. And then there is the non-infringement. Of course, that is specifically tackling the data centers, right? Our difference is that our measurements are specifically for PMM Motors uh, test bench for the oil and gas industry. The second one is the method and system for generating augmented reality with the display of a motor vehicle, which is where in your in a car and the AR technology is applied in a way where the objects outside uh, of the driver's scene are basically being mapped and captured the images and showing it to the user and also seeing some metrics as well. These are basically the claims the same with the algorithm and the visualization, the visualization of these metrics are potentially, uh, can potentially infringe. We'll go into that deeper. And the user-friendly interface as well. The non-infringement is because we specifically measure the KPI specifically of the test bench, again, of the motor, uh, the, the test bench of the PMM for the oil and gas industry. We will also be looking into looking into QR codes as we approach as one of the methods or image, images like that like they are doing except ours is not ours is not so wide it's very specific and the final one is a user control and augmented reality which is uh, the they are is technology is applied so it activates metrics as the user moves and so on and finally, the review that we do, we we're gonna review the concepts. We went over the importance of avoiding infringement, right? And then the revised concepts. Each patent has their own summary, claim summary, and non-infringement. Thank you. So what are our intentions? We want to bring relevance of augmented reality technology into the spotlight. And our obligation as, as engineers is our duty to bring the society forward. So what are the effects of our device since we can completely capture the field of view of our audience on an auditory and visual level, we are also in direct suggestive control of their thoughts and feelings. Pathos means relating to emotion, but we can create emotion. 
Sebastian Dieterding has given a speech about the responsibility between an engineer and his designs, and he touches on the idea of persuasive technology as being a means to change attitude or behavior through persuasion. This manifests itself in our project as simulation, where the user automatically reciprocates the simulated reality just by looking around through the goggles. Two keywords for this exchange are HCI, or human-computer interaction, and CMC, which is computer-mediated communication. Through augmented reality simulation, we are able to blur the lines between these two types of exchanges by overlaying our reality onto what the user sees and hears. What does this mean? From the principle of human-computer interaction, minimizing information access costs or interaction costs, what this means is that the, uh, the, user's the user's attention is diverted from one location to another to access necessary information, and there's an associated cost and time and effort. Our dilemma arises from the compromise that we have to face with uh, this data-driven technology. Since we're capturing live audiovisual feed, privacy as well as data security concerns can arise from this information getting into the wrong hands. So, leaked information can cause detrimental damage to companies as well as private individuals. And it's our responsibility as engineers towards the customers to protect them from exposure to potential vulnerabilities of data and privacy breaches. So how do we balance performance, usability, accessibility with the aspects of cybersecurity? The model that we've chosen is called Enhanced SaaS, SaaS being software as a service. We provide the software to the customers as a subscription model, along with providing dedicated on-site support during implementation. The software is provided on a need-dependent basis with tiered subscription models, whereas the higher tier options available with are available with full on-site support for business critical applications and this gives us a good balance between user privacy protection and our profitability. The second key point being safety, where we are protecting the users from harm and we're protecting the customer from leaking their own data or misusing the hardware or software. And the last point is security. We're creating an infrastructure where we can mitigate uh, sensitive uh, data breaches and uh, potential industrial espionage and hacking. So what does the good life mean to us? The good life for us is excellence acquired through self-actualization. We're currently in the development phase of this end. Eventually through development, this should lead us to success end. Within the success, we'll bring relevance to this technology. We want our product to have an impact in the industry and help bring AR technology into the eye of the general public. Eventually, Following success, it will lead to expansion, and with increased capital, we'll, we'll be able to extend our use case beyond marketing and perhaps into the humanitarian efforts. When you control the narrative, you control the outcome, so it is our responsibility to guide this industry and the technology that it uses forward. In this section, we are going to go over the concept development of the device. The AR demo requires four main components, the PLC computer, which acquires and sends the data, the data server, which gathers the data from the PLC and from the AR headset and compiles live information and 3D models to be displayed, the network medium through which the data is being sent, and finally, the AR display that will display data to the user. There are many solutions for each of these components. For the AR display, we have the option of using the Microsoft HoloLens. This is an already established platform. The available development tools processing power allows us to implement the AR demo easily. It provides more immersion and more computing power. Another method is to the use a smartphone or tablet to display the AR visuals. This will be the most cost effective approach and our design since most people already have the, the hardware. This concept has the highest scalability but lacks the immersion and ergonomics since the phone or the tablet must be held. Lastly, would be to develop our own AR headset. This will likely be by far the most difficult and most expensive to implement. And the resulting device may not be as reliable and safe as an already established commercial product. In terms of wireless connectivity, we decided to go with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi provides better network speeds and the scalability of adding multiple different devices to the network. For the server, we have the option of an industrial server or a single board computer. The industrial server will provide much more computing power and reliability, but comes at a higher price than the single board computer. 
In the concept selection phase, we weighted the different options and combinations and took into consideration the safety, user friendliness, and compatibility, reliability of each of the options. We also weigh them with our constraints of cost effectiveness, ease of implementation, and processing power. We found that the concept, the concept option that came out on top was that of using a Microsoft HoloLens, using Wi-Fi as our data medium and industrial server for the main processing. Our team will go ahead and proceed with this option. Thank you.